Um, I just wanted to uh, say a few things to Alexandra. Maybe we'll have longer discussions later. Um, but I mean, it's easy to throw the words of ideology out about someone else, and I know that there are many people of faith that do that uh, with others as well. Uh, but there's ideology in all of what we're doing and what we're saying. And I think we have to be respectful of each other, for one thing. Uh, and, and also, again, I have to go back to that whole idea of dialogue, understanding why uh, the Catholic Church or the Holy See or many other governments, if you sat in the room the other morning and heard the reservations by many governments, it wasn't the Holy See alone that had some reservations. And yet, many times, there's a failure on the part of those who are pushing another type of ideology to sit and listen to those others. And also to be sure that some of the points that are being forced on other governments because of the threat of funding cutbacks uh, where are not really acceptable within the culture. And it's, they're not doing that because they want to be evil or because they want to spread uh, an epidemic. Uh, so I think we have, really have to be careful as we throw out around those words of ideology. Bob, uh, with all respect, I didn't want to be unrespectful, but I think that it's a very important conversation for us. When we are talking about ideology, we are not talking about uh, evidence-based approach. It's true. It's, it's another evidence that we have, okay? So uh, uh, UN, UNESCO just uh, and UNICEF, they did, a, uh, for instance, a study showing how effective is comprehensive sexuality education for adolescents. They studied seven, eight countries. They have data showing that it is an important approach. Why Catholic, the Catholic Church cannot accept that and bring this conversation to another level on the table, considering that a lot of adolescents will get infected because they are not having accessing access to this type of information. So this is the type of conversation that we need to have, and I agree, we need to do that in a very respectful way. I didn't want to, to be unrespectful, but I think it's a very important point for us because we are not moving from this conversation. I think it's very important also to understand that there are still more religious voices, still more radical, you know? Are the new Pentecostals churches in my countries, my country, uh, for instance, there are groups saying that they can cure HIV. They are stimulating people to drop the treatment. You know, you see the case of Uganda. Uganda was a country that was d doing a amazing work in terms of prevention and controlling HIV. When this church arrived there, everything completely changed. So. I think it's important for the states to play their role, which is to take care of people and to put people on the center of the response, okay? Women, should, they should have the right to respond and to decide what to do with their body. This is not a, any religion matter. It's our own matter. It's our right. So this is the perspective that is missing in this conversation. Okay, well... That's why you're here, and the perspective is now there. I have two uh, fingers up on the panel.